Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Tonight, I want to do a quick summary of the recent town hall from Friday, December 10th. Um, it's about 24 hours ago now when I'm recording it, uh, but I have a kind of a concise summary of what, what I took away from that thing, and I want to share it here with you now. I know most of you don't uh, sit through the whole thing, and I did. So here's what I took away from it. I took uh, note notes for under each speaker, Nate, Agro, to Hardpoint, Yaba chatter and uh, and I've distilled them into what I thought was the most important points. This will be under 20 minutes for sure. I'm gonna make make certain it is. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Dwayne. I go by Infidel1258, and we cover Splinter Lance here all day, every day. So the first thing is Nate got into it, and he was talking about lore and how again, as he always does, just building up the excitement and the anticipation around where he's gonna take that. The vision for lore and the story to be grown and built and expanded and explored is so fun and so exciting because if you're like me, you like games like Starcraft or even Diablo, Blizzard has done so well, one thing is so well, which is this, build that world, show the world, let us explore it, let us know the culture, let us understand the setting. And I feel like that's what Nate's aiming at. And I'm excited to see that story be told. And on various levels, books, comics, uh, movies. Um, he talked about all of it. And he said, also land is coming and that's gonna be immersive. It's gonna be an experience that you can step into. Um, you'll be able to find your plot of land on the, on the map and you'll be able to see lore specific locations nearby. And you'll be able to understand um, it, it makes me think of Lord of the Rings because Lord of the Rings, there's a map at the beginning of the book and it's really important to understand the, the, the geography so that you can understand the tension that existed in that world, um, with, um, Gondor being so close to, um, uh, oh my goodness. Why am I forgetting the Mount, the Mount doom, the bad area. Anyways, just understanding geography allows you to understand the cultural experience it's really cool how it all unpacks as you start to look deeper and pull back the layers and i see nate excitedly talking about that eagerly exploring that so that was cool and aggro got into a few things and i'm it bounced around my notes my notes are categorized based on aggro or um, yaba but they but he they didn't necessarily say all of these points one after another Agro is my next one, and he talked about how he he has a he, his vision for how big that could get um, is literally a theme park island. He wants to buy an island, and he and he envisions like um, a Splinterlands universe that you step into, literally like a physical location that you go and explore Praetoria, which is so cool. And it immediately got me thinking like Disneyland meets Jurassic Park you know, cosplaying type Disneyland, you know, people, ca characters acting out some of the m famous lore or some of the amazing um, summoners or monsters that we've come to know through playing the game and then exploring some of the townships or the, you know, um, um, just all of the diff different locations that we end up getting to know as we go, as we learn more and more about the, the story. That would be so cool. I think that would be really, really cool. And I feel like these guys with the crypto access, like the money that comes from crypto, that could actually be realized. It's so exciting to think where the, how big this could get. And then on a totally unrelated note, Agro later talked about DC and how land might, there was a question about how DC to upgrade guilds has gotten out of control because DC is so expensive. And as a result, the question was like, what are we going to do with land? If we have to develop the land, plots of land to increase the buildings on that land, to maximize the farming production for the land plot, can we under, can we just get out of the gate, say that like DC peg is just not very logical because clearly DC disconnects from the peg. And when it does, developing the land will cost a fortune. So can we just say that whatever DC is at market value, that's what the cost, that's what will be accepted for the upgrades to our land. And they said both Yaba and Agro said, yes, that makes sense, um, which is great because it actually means those of you who are holding DC, they're, they're starting to maybe concede the fact that they don't really care if DC ever returns. 
to the the peg, which could mean that one day they actually just you know remove the the soft the um, inflationary um, algorithmic inflation, which is part of the thing that's actually holding DEC back from just going higher and higher and higher and higher. Um, uh, and then also they said on that note, but if DEC ever falls to a point where it's below the peg, where, where it's 1000 DEC equals $1, if it fell below the peg, they would still accept it at that rate of 1000 to 1, which, which is great news for DEC holders because it represents um, a floor for the for the price of DC and and yet they're saying but it can continue to go higher and we'll be okay with that too and we'll accept it at that value so it's like there's no ceiling but there's a floor that's good for long-term DC holders and many of you are because you want to hold it for the rest of the airdrop which is 250 days more which is quite a way so that was cool um then hard point hard point talked about the dev team and how it's tripled since the summertime which of course is a crazy amount of hiring and people getting on board and learning what, what splendor lines is about and the vision for you know where we're going uh very exciting and he said um marked items doubled oh yeah um he talked about how the market items the items that list that were listed on the marketplace literally doubled after cast legion packs were openable so think about that i forget the number i i didn't i couldn't write it down because i was driving at the time i want to say it was like if it was seven hundred thousand items were on the marketplace 1.4 million was after it was double the number it was hundreds of thousands and then double um and that's crazy because the implication is that the marketplace can handle a, a huge amount of action that's great news so you know whether it's what they the improvements that they made over the last few weeks to try and increase um throughput um and make sure the servers are resilient and so on and so forth whatever they did worked because they there was a ton of new action and it didn't it didn't flinch the system didn't flinch there were some minor issues but it was all good to go and they're looking forward to they're excitedly looking forward to january 17th when those new packs when those millions of new packs get released and all that that will entail you know everybody in their dog opening packs people listing people renting people selling people buying people right then yaba talked about land he talked about the land cards the items and spells that will be with the farm there he talked about how quote the end goal of land is to mint what did he say to mint these cards and we and we will have a player base who will want these cards so there is something you're you're producing which mimics our real world economy and he talked about that just like that i, I wrote that down because i thought to myself wow this really is this in-game currency will literally be a um a job opportunity for some people like people like me who own land are, are going to receive a revenue stream from an in-game asset and it has a use case that people are going to be stepping over them you know fighting over one another to, to get at you're going to want those items and those spells in order to achieve higher rank battle success which is going to unlock more daily rewards for you and as a result the the resources that are farmed from the land will be coveted it's so exciting to be a land holder guys and I understand land prices are super expensive, but man, is it cool to, to for for somebody like me who saw what land could be and just took a bite, and now to be seeing it's it's getting starting to be built out. And he also went on to say the land will be worked on, not released, but be really be the focus in Q1 2022, which is awesome. And then lastly, Yaba said that the validators, which are the oracles, the people that will eventually. Um, through our decentralized voting, we will use our SPS to vote on this guy or that guy. And we'll say, I trust that person and I want them to validate the actions that are happening with the, um, on the Splinterlands blockchain or like the Splinterlands data, how are they, whether it's, whether it's like tracking the battle data or whether it's tracking market data or whether it's how do we spend X amount of resources that have accumulated over the years and been currently held by Yaba and Matt. They are going to, all of that's going to be up to vote and that vote will be done through delegated proof of stake, which is decided based on how much SPS you have. You hold a hundred SPS, you have a hundred votes. You hold a million SPS, you have a million votes. 
you can put that vote behind certain validators that you respect and trust and then those validators will represent our community there'll be probably 20 of them or so and they'll represent our community and they'll track the 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 data and our votes and they will implement um, technological changes as well as financial um, they'll deploy financial uh, money to create new um to change the game how we vote upon how we vote and agree upon through through that delegated proof of stake very cool it's actually a major point of decentralization because currently the the game is really centralized in the hands of yaba and and aggie and they are it's really really cool and it speaks to their belief in you know what block in trustless systems and blockchain generally speaking um, um one of the major features is its trustless nature um and implementing this kind of decentralized delegated proof of stake system which will allow you and me as stakeholders to weigh in on major decisions that change the the direction of this game it's awesome it's exciting and it's coming then chatter talked about how in q2 or q3 they're going to do a splinter fest in las vegas i can't wait now hang on he did say las vegas is not booked he did say Q2 or three, which is to, which is is to say we don't really know when. It's going to depend on all this COVID craziness. Oh, I, I shouldn't have said that. Friggin' YouTube's going to shadow ban me and silence the video. All I'm saying is, look, we don't know when that's going to be, but they're aiming at doing it. I can't wait. I can't wait. I want to be there, and I hope you do too. He also talked more about how they're going to partner with Zen Sports and they're going to do a year-long tournament. This will have a this will be esports coming to Splinterlands next year, where we will have monthly tournaments, we will have quarterly tournaments, we have season-long tournaments, and they'll all be. And the season-long tournament will just be um, um, broken down into smaller and smaller tournaments, which you you essentially climb the rank, climb the ladder, and then at the end of the year, you end up achieving, someone will be, end up being the uh, the year-long tourney winner, and it'll be huge cash prizes, which is so exciting and fun, and it'll bring so much new attention to this game, because a ton of people in the world don't know what Splinterlands is, and this will be a major ticket a major uh, financial opportunity that will attract exciting uh, big guilds that are excited about yield farming games and, and um, blockchain based video games, but also not at all crypto minded guilds and, and uh, gamers. So it's going to open, it's going to start to attract more eyes, which is really great for those of us who have been investing in assets, right? We want, we want our game to grow. 400,000 daily active players is great. We want 4 million. That's where I'm at. That's where I think you are at too. So they're also hiring a, a, an esports manager. I don't have any idea what that would entail. But if you think you might have, uh, you know, the the props to, to take that that job, you know, get a hold of Chatter. Um, and then what else? Esports is going to attract mainstream gamers, grow our game. Yep. And that was it, guys. That's the that's the Coles notes. That's the Cunningham notes from the. Sp Splinterlands Town Hall in under 14 minutes, actually. So even faster than I expected. There was lots more there. Don't get me wrong. The thing was chocked full of commentary from from everyone. And it was uh, worth the watch. So I say go watch it. But, you know, this is the, the under 20 minute version. Okay. So thank you very much for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.